Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden and in this video I'm going to be having a look around a garden that I built two years ago and I've travelled back to Leeds in Yorkshire to see how it's getting on. Let's go and have a look. So here we are at the start of the garden. I've just come down this alleyway here and the garden then opens out into what I would say is probably a typically sized uh, suburban garden and it was basically a, a, you know a few broken slabs and really unhelpful for access for getting around the garden uh, really difficult for the uh, for the uh, the owner of this property to to actually get around the garden and enjoy it and maintain it so the main spec was to create an area that was user friendly but also wildlife friendly of course and uh, I think it's ticked both boxes as we're about to find out so if I take you to the far side of the garden first the garden actually has a lovely existing belt of trees and shrubs uh, which you can see behind me there's all sorts in there there's uh, some lilac in the corner which has gone over now so it's um it's kind of the first end of the first week in june now so uh, things are a little bit late this year however i'll take you over to what is an absolute bee magnet on this side of the garden and that is uh this broom which as you can see is very similar to the bird's foot trefoil very similar flower got a a, a quite uh, well, it's not too attractive as a scent, but uh, obviously very, very attractive for bees. That's absolute profusion of colour at the moment, looking absolutely stunning. So really good to have that. We've got some Hebe in here as well, which is a really good one. Uh, that looks as if it's going to be a summer flowering variety. I can just see uh, some of the buds forming uh, on there now, uh, which is great. So that'll be coming into flower soon. Another Hebe at the end there. Underneath, uh, so uh, alongside this uh, patio area that we built, this top level patio, uh, we planted uh, the Arisamum Bowls Mauve, which uh, if you're looking to order some, by the way, Wildy Garden Shop, uh, wildygarden.com has some uh, at the moment. These things are absolutely brilliant. This is a perennial wallflower and they're so good for bees, butterflies and the like. So you can see, really brilliant and just, uh, an absolute block of nectar for insects at this time of year. Uh, what else have we got? We've also got, uh, as I skirt around the edge of the umbrella, so we've got the top level patio there with a few, few pots, but the main focal point of the garden, of any garden, of course, the wildlife pond, which is, I've just been absolutely teeming with life. Um, I've just been filming a piece for Channel 5 today in this garden, so this is a bit of a, an early evening video. But throughout the day, even in uh, sort of overcast conditions, first thing this morning, there has been so much life in this pond. And um, I'll put a few clips in now. We've had uh, two broad-bodied chasers, uh, broad-bodied chaser dragonflies emerging from their exuvia and actually pumping their wings up uh, and taking their first flight. It's been incredible to see. Uh, we've had large red dragonflies in an absolute, uh, sorry, large red damselflies in an absolute profusion. There's been seven or eight individuals around this water body. Um, and there's been um, either an azure or common blue damselfly as well, which I'm not sure which one. I couldn't get close enough to tell. Uh, but the pond itself is absolutely full of newts and uh, frogs, uh, pond snails, obviously. There's water boatmen in here. There's pond skaters and it's absolutely brimming with life um just a pleasure to see it really is and it's such a focal point and the grandkids uh, love coming here to uh, come and do some pond dipping which of course is a necessity for any child i think <laughs> it doesn't matter where, or any adult you know why would you not want to do some pond dipping in the garden so um the access, as I say, was, was key to make sure there was access all year round. So we've actually put in these uh, compacted gravel pathways all around the edge of the garden. So I'll take you on a bit of a journey around the edge. We're gonna go down this pathway first uh, and I shall take you around this side of the garden. Um, obviously we have uh, the meadow stretching away from the edge of the pond, which again, it's just been full of bees and hoverflies and uh, one or two butterflies. Um, all day today, it's been absolutely brilliant. In this corner of the garden, we've got an existing holly tree uh, and the um, the owner of this property and garden actually has a good uh, number of holly blue butterflies through the season, which is brilliant. Um, the pond is really filling in nicely now. 
dragonfly perch. I'll put a clip in now of the large red damselfly that was using that perch to its full potential earlier, of course. Damselflies, dragonflies love a prominent point to be able to sit and look for other insects to hunt, basically. So uh, that's why I put them in every pond I make. I've got some bog bean in there, fringed water lily doing well. There's a single um, frog bit flower that just come up now. So that's really nice. And just swap hands. Um, yeah, and I'll show you from this angle the wildflower meadow, which is looking absolutely delightful at the moment. We've got lots of species in here. Come down to this corner, see if I can get a bit more, a bit more sun on it. We've got lots of species in here. So we have the buttercups obviously doing very well. We've got red camping, there's white camping in there, oxide daisies, knapweed. Um, we've also got uh, some yarrow in there as well. Which is just coming into flower actually i'll show you some of the species got the arrow here doing very well really nice flower red camping um it's going over in the south it's gone over in my garden now early june however um i just had a blackbird visiting literally just jumped off the fence i turned the camera around but <laughs> but these buttercups of course looking absolutely fabulous at the moment um, a lot of oxides about to come out, you can see all the kind of bulbous heads ready to explode with life. Got some red clover in here as well, which is a, a really good one for bees, of course. And we've even got a bit of white campion in the middle there, which is a good next source as well. Looking brilliant at the moment. Um, can't not show you this really while I'm here. This French lavender. Now, normally French lavenders, uh, if we have a really cold year, they can succumb to frost uh, and perish, but um, this seems to have been all right for the last couple of years. And look at the amount of bees in it. I'm not sure how many you can see, but it's just absolutely full of bees. Just a brilliant plant for uh, so many insects. And um, then we have the herbaceous border, which unfortunately, because of the um, the cold winter we had, uh, a lot of the verbena bonariensis that I planted in here has actually died um, died now. So I've brought up some replacements with me today uh, with the hope that we get a few years where we don't have too cold uh, a winter. But in here, we've got some classic herbs. This is actually tansy. A really nice wildflower, uh, loved by the holly blue butterfly, the second brood of holly blue butterfly that emerge later on in the summer. And uh, love the little sort of yellow button heads of the tansy, love nectarine on that. Uh, more erysimum, bowls mauve, which again flowers so long through the air. And I must just take you round to the other part of the garden where I've got another lovely wildflower at the moment. However, en route, there are lots of these uh, Rebecca's, um, which are going to be flowering soon uh, and actually this is um, echinacea I believe the leaves are very 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 similar I sometimes get confused but um, there are both in here I think that's actually the um, echinacea in the background this is Rebecca but um, yeah really 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 good flowers this is Rebecca goldstrom which has a yellow uh, petal and a sort of a chocolate brown centre uh, loved by many insects again and if we come round here, star of the shady border, this red valerian, which has uh, three colour options actually. Uh, pick, a, pick the draw whether you get uh, the, the red, the pink, or the um, white variety for this valerian. This is the kind of the dark red version. It's absolutely stunning. And a, a really good one for attracting hummingbird hawk moths to your garden. They absolutely love nectar on this. Of course, this is a um, uh, a, a wildflower that has introduced itself um, over the last sort of 50, 60 years into the UK, but doing really well, of course, and uh, is really good for really dry settings or shady settings. It's quite a versatile plant, a bit like red campion, really, uh, but it's absolutely brilliant here under 
this existing holly tree, which is um, probably where a lot of the spring, bro spring brood holly blue butterflies come from. So uh, holly trees are a great one for your garden if you're looking for a tree in your garden, obviously evergreen, so they uh, will hold their leaf and um, give you some nice evergreen colour through the autumn and the winter months. But yeah, really nice for that. Uh, there are a few other bits and bobs in here. Uh, we have some marjam, some uh, in the pita as well. Uh, of course, every garden should have one, a buddleia on the corner. Really nice to see that. Classic down there, garlic mustard. If you can get some of that stuff in your garden, the larval food plant for the green vein white, large white, and my favorite butterfly, the orange tip butterfly. So garlic mustard, if you can get some there. It is a biennial, so at the moment, this stuff will flower. This will have been dropped and then um, germinated from seed from last year's stock. So it's not gonna flower until next year because it's, as I say, biennial. However, it will produce uh, a lot of flower and nectar and larval food plant. Uh, when they do come out next spring, so really nice one there. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some aqualegias in the border down here. Aqualegia is another good one for bees, um, if you can see. Uh, and again, these lilacs. The, now the main thing, of course, is cover for birds. If you're trying to attract them to your garden, you've got you know lots of lilac. You've got a bay tree again, really good cover. Um, and bays do provide quite a lot of nectar as well for a lot of insects. Uh, more lilacs down the bottom. Yeah, some good stuff in this garden that was here existing that we didn't want to take out, of course. You know, if you completely strip a garden, you remove all that existing habitat in years and years of growth. So work with trees and shrubs where you can. doesn't matter if they're not 100% native, they're still attracting the birds to your garden, of course. Uh, then we have this border here where the honeysuckle um, has actually come away from um, its climbing system. Um, that was there existing. I didn't didn't put that up, but... Uh, uh, and the the... Box. I'll try and put a clip in the video now um, where there have been a brood of blue tits this year and the uh, the lady of the house has filmed all the goings on for, with, with that brood this year so I'll put a bit of a clip in there now and um, yeah honeysuckle doing really well good for a shady spot good climb for a wall habitat for birds for nesting potential so get some honeysuckle in your card, garden absolutely when I was here just gonna swap hands again when I was here last uh, well when I was building the garden a couple of years ago um, this is a plum. I think, if I remember correctly, it's a Victoria plum. And it was absolutely laden with plums uh, in the autumn when I came back to film another piece for Channel 5 on this very garden two years ago. Um, and when the fruit had dropped, it was absolutely covered in red admirals and speckled wood butterflies uh, that were feasting on that rotten fruit. Of course, they love rotten fruit. So orchards are very good uh, for autumn for uh, butterflies. Birds as well, of course, providing fruit. Uh, for field fairs and red wings and that sort of thing. But um, autumn fruit, yeah, really good for butterflies as well. Um, so that's a nice nice thing to have in the garden. So if you can get some, uh, get some fruit trees in your garden, they're very good. And of course the nectar early on uh, in the year for the um, insects is very good as well. Not just the berries, or, you know, in terms of say a rowan, for example, the berries obviously very good uh, later on in the year, but equally, um, the flowers when they first come out in May are very, very good as well for a lot of insects and they just smell divine rowan zoo. Um, yes, so that's a bit of a quick pit stop tour. However, I thought you'd like to see this garden and just see how much life is here, how much color is here and um, just how wonderful a wildlife garden can look. And this isn't the peak of summer even, you know, there's, there's so much stuff in here. There's the, um, uh, the knapweed still is just about to come out. Uh, we've got later flowering species in there as well. So lots and lots of colour yet to come. Uh, same with the pond. We've got purple loose stripe. We've got a uh, block of common fleabane down there that is yet to flower. So again, the nectar and the flowers are going to continue long into the summer in this garden, which is, of course, vital for providing nectar and habitat for insects from early on in the year when they are emerging right the way through to the end of the year. And that's why <clears throat> the Bowls Mauve is one of my favourite herbaceous perennials just because it has such a prolonged uh, nectar season. It's almost flowering all year, as I said earlier. Uh, so really, the only things that have changed in this garden, we've lost a few of the verbena out of this bed due to uh, a bit of harsh weather. And I think as well, I've since learned that cutting them back um, in the spring is better for them rather than um, in the autumn time once they've finished flowering. A, 
because of the bird benefit, the goldfinches have been in this garden on the teasels and we actually, I haven't noticed it, haven't pointed it out yet, sorry, but we have one or two teasels in the garden. Teasels, really, really good. Can be a bit of a thug when they start spreading, but teasels, really, really, really good um, for nectar, for a lot of butter butterflies mid-season, so July, uh, that'll be flowering in a couple of weeks probably, um, towards the end of June. And uh, really good in the autumn for the seed for all the finches as well so uh, goldfinches really love it they come into this garden uh, to, uh, to to make the most of the seeds offered in a teasel head probably the most uh, renowned source of seeds for uh, goldfinches i would say through the winter months however as i was just saying the verbena bonariensis um, that was in this bed uh, did attract a few goldfinches as well and equally the knapweed the lesser knapweed or black knapweed that's in the meadow very good for goldfinches as well so leave your cutting leave your herbaceous borders uh, and things over winter you never know what might turn up and feast on the seed in the colder months um but yeah lots to come out lots and lots of nectar available uh in the, in the coming months and um seed as well through the autumn so the things that have changed as i was saying We've lost the verbenas in here, but I've brought some back. Uh, hopefully by encouraging a march, trimming back, it will they'll be less susceptible to the frost. Um, other than that, not a lot has changed. It's been really nice to see this garden again. Really nice to come back and visit it, to see how it's developed and everything's um, kind of got really lush and thick and it's just brimming with life and colour. You know, there's almost every colour in the rainbow in this garden for at one point of the year or another. So uh, really good to see. So hopefully, um, it'll continue to encourage more and more wildlife into the garden. And fingers crossed, this video has given you guys a bit of an idea as to how you can help create a, your own wildlife garden, how you can maximize your space, even if it's a small garden, even if you have less than this, if it's just a balcony, you can still make a difference. So thank you very much for watching guys. Really appreciate all the support you've been giving me. And uh, if you've got any comments about this garden or anything else, drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.